Many young people who end up in the justice system have experienced poverty and disadvantage. Julie Edwards, CEO of Jesuit Social Services, says this is why it's important to focus on early intervention before young people end up in the system. We want to make sure that um, people end up finishing school, that they come from families where uh, there are breadwinners and there is a culture of participation in the community. Um, we want to make sure that people's mental health problems get addressed, etc. So we want to be tough on the causes of crime. So we think part of diversion is actually having that broader social, political, economic lens on things. But what support do you get if you do end up in youth detention? How are you rehabilitated? Maya Graham is a teacher at Parkville College in Melbourne. So in response to an ombudsman's report in 2010, there was a proposal put forward to have a school, um, a new state school at Parkville Youth Justice Precinct and we are officially a school as of our own school as of the start of this year. It has been challenging on lots of fronts having kids who have got a wide range of abilities and they've also had a really broad range of experiences to do with education. They're generally disengaged from education, of course not always, but often um, when you meet a kid for the first time and you're talking to him about his prior experiences of school, often um, they won't have been recently to school, um, had kids that haven't been in school for years and so I'm the first teacher that they've spoken to in a while and there's a lot of barriers to break down there. So um, we're really conscious of our approach of um, how we treat the boys and how we get to know them and how we try and build rapport so that we can work with them in the classroom. Generally we're working, depending on the age, but generally we're working to transition them back into school. So once we can break down that negative association with teachers and school and um, facilitate their learning and get them positive about school and about learning, which, you know, you can, you know, it's really fun to work with that um, and reignite that passion for learning, I guess. Maya usually has about 15 boys in her class, ranging from about 15 to 18 years old. As well as the challenges of supporting a wide range of learning needs, the fast turnover of students also poses problems. Um, I'm currently teaching in a sentenced unit, so I've generally got them for longer, but it could be from as short as three weeks to the whole year. The average is probably three to six months, give or take. And then in remand, they can be there from a day um, I think maybe um, officially it's meant to be an average of three weeks, like they're certainly not meant to be in remand for a long time, but of course depending on individual cases some boys can be there for a really long time and new charges come up and we've had students that have certainly been on remand nearly up to a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so that constant changeover is really, really difficult to work with. You'll get a cohort of boys that suddenly work well as a group and you know how to facilitate group work amongst the boys. Um, and then you'll have a new kid that will arrive and be entered into that mix. And you see how that's difficult on the units and how that plays out in their living um, quarters. Despite the unique challenges of teaching at Parkville College, the school's status change to an official school speaks to the success of the teaching program and its teachers. Maya says there have been noticeable changes at the precinct since the program started. All I know is that now when I go to meet students or when I visit them on the remand units, um, I am blown away by how much more the conversation is about learning or education. They'll want to talk to me about the books that they're reading. They'll want to talk to me about what they're struggling with in school. They'll be more um, motivated to um, try something when they leave or to have a, um, a, a smoother transition back into school. Like I just feel like it's um, positively impacted their sense of hope of what they can achieve. Also an interesting repercussion for the precinct but also for the boys is that the number of assaults and um, what they call code blacks has decreased significantly since the school has been in place. Um, so the boys are just um, busier. They're yeah, they're happier. I mean, it's hard to measure again, but you can see how it's a, um, just feels like a better vibe and yeah, they're more interested and yeah. yeah. Maya also thinks that early intervention is key to helping young people stay out of the system. I think it's, I think early intervention is massive and especially around their sense of self-worth and their idea of what they can achieve and who they are, like it's so much wrapped up in 
self-identity and if I've had a kid that's been in there before and he's come back um, through breaking his parole or new charges and a new sentence, his sense of who he is is linked to seeing himself as a criminal and therefore what his options are in life and breaking that is so challenging and so hard and we prioritise that like a lot of the work we do is around um, growth mindset rather than having them ha have a fixed mindset which is often what um, not often what but what can happen in schools with um, teaching and so we really work on challenging that and that would be so much easier if the kids don't already have such a set idea of who they are 